Glutathione is one of your body's most important antioxidant and detoxification molecules. Unfortunately, many people actually have a deficiency in glutathione. We're going to talk about ways to simply assess and measure potentially your need for glutathione support and the conditions that are linked with glutathione insufficiency, such as mitochondrial function, accelerated aging, and increased markers of oxidative stress that are linked with all sorts of conditions that are common, unfortunately, like prediabetes, diabetes, heart disease, even certain forms of cancer and neurodegenerative conditions are characterized by insufficient glutathione levels. Now, many people are supplementing with direct glutathione. Now, that might not be optimal because your body's balance of oxidative versus redox stress is actually quite sensitive and specific. So scientific researchers are actually highlighting the importance of instead of supplementing directly with glutathione to help support glutathione levels, that you should allow your body and your cells to auto-regulate their glutathione synthesis by providing the two rate-limiting amino acids for glutathione production. That is N-acetylcysteine and glycine. I think a lot of people forget about glycine, but if you look here, you can see how the glutathione tripeptide is comprised of glutamine, which is widely abundant in your body, in your diet, and so forth. Uh, what is not so abundant is actually cysteine, and that's why people supplement with N-acetylcysteine as well as glycine. So you can see the two rate-limiting amino acids. That's important to recognize. There are amino acids that are important in supporting something, but the rate-limiting amino acids to for your cells to synthesize glutathione are cysteine and glycine. And that's why many people have been supplementing with NAC, but it actually makes more sense as this paper and many others and several recently published studies have talked about supporting both NAC and glycine as a way to allow your cells to auto-regulate their levels of glutathione because it turns out that various different cell types might need more glutathione than others. And when you take direct glutathione, you're not allowing for your cells to auto-regulate. You're just hoping it goes to where it needs to go. And you might be wondering, well, where is glutathione working in the body? It's working within your immune system. It's working within the lung tissue. There's a lot of uh, glutathione uh, need within the lungs, as well as the liver and possibly the brain. So by giving your body the, the raw materials, the rate-limiting amino acids to make glutathione, makes more sense to allow your cells to auto-regulate their own glutathione production to match their needs. And so one of the papers that we're going to uh, focus in on today I think it's important. And there's a new term. And I really want this term to help, you know, influence people to better understand this because this is a trend that I'm seeing in the science. Moving away just from NAC to glynac. That means glycine NAC together. So this is glynac supplementation improves glutathione deficiency, oxidative stress, mitochondrial dysfunction, inflammation, aging hallmarks, metabolic defects, muscle strength, cognitive decline, and body composition. So what was interesting in this particular study, this was an open label study. So there are some shortcomings of this study, but what this study found in this open label study was improvements in body composition, in energy and markers of oxidative stress in subjects that were given a combination of not just NEC, but NEC and glycine together. This was aged individuals over the age of 65, and they didn't have these subjects change their diet or change their exercise programs. They just gave them a solid dose. It was a gram of each of these different amino acids. And again, these amino acids uh, are naturally occurring in, in the diet, although some diets are lower in others, like a vegan diet, for example. And what they found is a myriad of different improvements in just in body composition, markers of mitochondrial health, uh, and also markers of improved metabolism over the course of, I think it was an eight-week study. And so this has implications when it comes to healthy aging. A lot of us are just trying to feel better, to age more gracefully. We want to be more functional as we get older, to play with grandkids and have more energy in our businesses and our activities and to travel and do the creative endeavors that we want to do. And this is a really affordable way to help support this key process of aging. And that is to help support the, the levels of your cells to make more glutathione, to help to mitigate some of the toxins that are in your environment, in your air, food, your water, your clothing. We know that there's endocrine disrupting chemicals. They're ubiquitous. We know polar bears in Antarctica, when their fat tissues are biopsied, have flame retardants and all sorts of plastics that they've never seen in their lifetime, but they're getting there through the water, uh, through the rain, uh, presumably also through the air and much more. So how can we safeguard against this? Well, supporting glutathione by way of NAC paired with glycine could be a nice combination. 
Just a small plug, this is something that I personally formulated, helped to bring to you as a Glynat combination, the NAC Glycine Supreme by Myoscience. I'll put links below, check it out. Um, but I'm providing this content for you to help you better understand where the research trend is coming, not just to make you aware of this unique formulation, although that uh, is really beneficial. Um, and I'll put links you can save with the code podcast at checkout. But supporting, again, the, the body's natural levels of glutathione with these precursor amino acids makes a little bit more sense than spending 70, 80 dollars on just straight up glutathione. And as this paper talks about, the there's a lot of conflicting evidence when it comes to direct antioxidant supplementation. We know that people that take beta carotene, which is an antioxidant, we know people that take vitamin E, an antioxidant, people that take other direct antioxidants, the outcomes is actually mixed. You know, for example, it's not suggested that you take antioxidants after exercise. It might slow down uh, the adaptations that you get from exercise. And there is some conflicting evidence with all the antioxidants. So it makes a little bit more sense then to give your body the precursors so the cells that have increased oxidative stress, for you that could be cells around the endothelium, for other people it could be cells in the heart, for other people it could be cells in the liver, allowing those cells to auto-regulate their glutathione production, not just give a direct antioxidant. And so that's kind of the take-home message from this video and from many of the papers that I've been reading, urging people to move away from direct antioxidant supplementation to giving the precursor amino acids to an, uh, allow the cells that need to make glutathione to be able to make them, not just you know, kind of a shotgun approach. This is more of a targeted approach. But I think it's just really important to recognize that glutathione is really important. Uh, studies have shown, and it's important to recognize, these amino acids that we're talking about have not been approved by the FDA to prevent, treat, cure uh, diseases. We're talking about supporting health. But we know that glutathione has been shown to actually help with the detoxification of various persistent organic pollutants, heavy metals, uh, and it, help, it may help to mitigate uh, some free radical stress and much more. So what I thought was fascinating about some of these studies that I've been seeing, uh, in fact, this combination has been used in severe COVID, you know, believe it or not. It's kind of interesting that NAC was pulled during the middle of a pandemic, but it's weird, but but thankfully you can buy it now, uh, which is nice. But there was one study titled Severe Glutathione Deficiency, Oxidative Stress, and Oxidant Damage in Adults Hospitalized with COVID-19. And some studies have had used NAC glycine combinations uh, in these individuals and, and found actually improved outcomes. And so I, again, this is just one example uh, where we can help support people's immune response potentially uh, and, and and help uh, decrease some of the some of the stress on the body, and so I think that's important. But you might be wondering, well, you know, should I even consider glutathione? Like, is it worth it for me? Or are there any biomarkers that I can look at? And this is a commonly used biomarker to ascertain the glutathione turnover in the body, and that's a liver enzyme known as GGT, gamma glutamyl transpeptidase. And this enzyme actually helps with the glutamine transport into cells. Remember, the glutathione tripeptide, you have glutamine, and then the two rate-limiting amino acids, glycine and cysteine. Gamma glutamyl transpeptidase, also known by the acronym GGT, on your common labs from Quest or LabCorp, when that's elevated over 30, that could be a proxy or an association suggesting that you might benefit from supporting your glutathione levels. And we see this in diabetes and prediabetes and people with heart disease and people with high blood pressure is oftentimes when their labs are run, their GGT levels are increased. Um, there was a, a Dr. Lee in South Korea that has been studying this for a very long time, and she found a strong correlation between higher blood levels of persistent organic pollutants and environmental toxins and how those correlate with elevated blood levels of GGT and also ALT as well. So if we think about the liver, uh, this is a key detoxification organ. So it makes sense that if your body is processing some of these compounds that you're exposed to in your air, food, water, clothing, and furniture and uh, things like that, that as your liver is you know, being more and more stressed by accumulation of these compounds, that it would increase its production of glutathione. And that's why GGT might increase as well as ALT, another liver enzyme. So next time you go to the doctor, make sure that they run GGT. Many of the doctors that I'm personally friends with and have known for the past 20 years, uh, they'll tell you that in medical school and residency, it was recommended to only run GGT when you suspect alcoholism because 
People who are alcoholics, their GGT can generally increase, sometimes into the hundreds, because we know ethanol is a hepatotoxin, as is acetaminophen or Tylenol. And so uh, if you take Tylenol, if you drink alcohol, uh, you should definitely consider supplementing with glycine and NAC, because we know that those compounds are hard on the liver. But that's a simple, non-invasive way. You need to get blood work once a year anyway for good health. So why not run your GGT next time? And remember, these are international units. I think it's you know international units per liter is the, is the marker uh, or the way that GGT is characterized. And when that's over 30, that might suggest that you could possibly benefit from improving glutathione levels. So you should consider an NAC glycine combination uh, in that context. Now, there are other complex biomarkers, F2 isoprostanes and, you know, myeloperoxidase and these things that get a little bit more esoteric that you need to order from boutique labs. Those also get expensive very quickly. So I think it's more prudent. To start with the basics, a, a Chem24 CBC will have your GGT on it. A Chem24 CBC is the, the acronym for a comprehensive metabolic panel with a complete white blood cell count. And so this is the blood test that you should be getting along with iron and ferritin and all that. And we have our blood work cheat sheet over at High Intensity Health. Definitely download that. Bring that in to your next primary care visit. Um, but definitely make sure to measure your, your GGT and ALT. And um, if they're over 30, then you might, there might be a need for you to periodically support, especially in the evening time. This is one thing I think that is not recognized is that from a circadian rhythm perspective, antioxidants are more active while we're sleeping in the evening time. So uh, if you are going to take NAC or glycine, you don't necessarily want to do that in the morning or with lunch. You might want to take that in the evening before bed to get the best benefit. So Uh, Hopefully you found this content helpful. If you did, hit that like button. Be sure to share this video with a friend. Leave a comment below and let me know what you think on this. And also some of the articles that we talked about, I'll link them in the show notes, which will be in the links below as well. So hopefully you found it helpful. And remember, when you think NAC, you want to also want to think about glycine because those are the two rate-limiting amino acids when it comes to increasing or supporting cellular Uh, formation of glutathione. So that's it for today, friends. As always, thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you on a future episode down the road.